More and more people are experimenting with microdosing of various hallucinogenic drugs to try and improve their lives and to treat various forms of mental illness. Psychedelic microdosing is the practice of using sub-threshold doses of serotonergic psychedelic drugs in an attempt to improve creativity, boost physical energy levels, promote emotional balance, increase performance on problem-solving tasks, and to treat anxiety, depression and addiction. The practice of microdosing has become more widespread in the 21st century, with more people claiming long-term benefits from the practice. The two most common psychedelic drugs used in microdosing are lysergic acid diethylamide, LSD, and psilocybin from psychoactive mushrooms. Other psychoactive drugs, such as mescaline, are also used. A microdose is usually one-tenth to one-twentieth of an active dose of the psychedelic drug. In contrast to the recreational use of psychedelics, individuals who microdose often stick to drug schedules, often dosing once every three days. Some legal plant-based alternatives that may be readily available and may achieve similar results are Oliliquri seeds, morning glory seeds, and Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds. Morning glory seeds were used to treat illnesses. A healer was thought to be able to identify the location of a specific illness and through divine intervention, through the use of oliliquri or morning glory seeds, was able to cure the illness. This was reported by Albert Hoffman, the first chemist to synthesize LSD. Oliliqui was used to treat syphilis, help flatulence, and even remove tumours. It was also used as a sedative or pain reliever in fractures and pelvic problems in women. Its powdered form could also be applied to painful areas for conditions like gout. Hawaiian baby wood rose seeds. It has many other names such as the elephant creeper, Argyria nervosa, as well as the woolly morning glory. It's a herb that's been scientifically proven to treat cuts, wounds, internal bleeding, rheumatism, ulcers and gangrene. The roots, leaves and seeds of this plant were used for a number of medical benefits. The roots of the plant are a rejuvenator, a diuretic, a nervine tonic, and therefore they're effective in treating diseases of the nervous system and rheumatism. It's interesting to note that this herb is quite effective in treating gangrene, and the seeds contain LSA, which is an ergot derivative, and it's known how ergot poisoning interferes with blood flow and causes gangrene. Also, this plant, which can treat gangrene, has a symbiotic relationship with the ergot fungus, which it requires to synthesize the LSA from. The lysergic acid amide component of Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds is very structurally similar to that of LSD. In Hawaii, the baby woodrose has reportedly been used for thousands of years as a cheap alternative to cannabis and alcohol, as well as having some religious and spiritual significance. It's believed that almost uniquely among plant hallucinogens, the Hawaiian baby woodrose seed was not widely known as an entheogen until 1960, subsequent to research related on morning glories. Some have, however, postulated that the Hawaiian baby woodrose is a potential candidate for the legendary Soma, a plant referred to repeatedly in the Rig Veda, one of four ancient Sanskrit texts which are sacred in Hinduism. Woodrose or Vidhara is traditionally known to be a brain tonic. It has the following effects on the nervous system. On motor activities, a study done in mice 
showed that the root extracts of Arduria nervosa suppress the activity of the central nervous system, as well as spontaneous motor activity. Motor activity refers to the things we do without even thinking about them. Experts suggest that this drug may have neuroleptic properties. That is, it helps reduce nervous tension. And its nootropic effect. In an in vivo animal-based study, Vidhara was suggested to have sedative effects on the body, along with possible neuroleptic, which improve cognition and reduce confusion properties. A study published in the Journal of Health Science indicated that Arduria nervosa can reverse age-related amnesia in mice and improve both memory and learning. Another animal study done in India found improvements in spatial memory and learning skills on regular administration of Arduria speciosa. A preclinical animal model study published in the Journal of Ayurveda and Integrative Medicine found that regular administration of Arduria speciosa can increase the body's resistance to all kinds of stress, possibly due to stimulation of the immune system. Some other benefits from the Hawaiian baby wood rose. It has anti-aging properties. It's a rejuvenating tonic, an aphrodisiac, and it's spermatogenic. The chemical compounds present in wood rose make it an effective natural sedative and it's used in Ayurveda as a hallucinogen. LSA is the most well-known compound found in wood rose seeds. Each seed contains approximately 10 micrograms. When eaten whole, not many seeds are required to experience the psychoactive effect. A strong psychoactive dose would be 12 seeds. Therefore, one seed consumed twice a week would be a standard microdose. It's important to check the law in your country as the law varies greatly between them. For example, here morning glory seeds containing LSA are readily available in supermarkets and garden centres. However, these seeds are meant for cultivation and are often sprayed with fungicides and other chemicals to improve their survival rate. As a result, they should not be eaten and only freshly grown and harvested seeds, which are chemical free, should be used. LSA has similar effects to LSD, but is far less psychedelic and can be sedating in larger doses. Users report experiencing a dreamlike state in which consciousness is fully maintained. Hallucinations are rare, but they may occur at higher doses. LSA is a weak agonist of the dopamine type 2 receptor, which is common among plant-derived alkaloids. Garlic, which contains sulfur, reacts with compounds in the baby woodrose seed and negates its nauseating effects. Ginger is also consumed with woodrose seed for its calming effect on the stomach. However, this would not be necessary in the microdose range. In 1947, it was synthesized and tested for human activity by Albert Hoffman. The intramuscular administration of a 500 microgram dose produced a tired, dreamy state with an inability to maintain clear thoughts. Users' reports describe the effects of LSA as primarily sedating and dreamlike, with a mild to moderate psychedelic component. The psychedelic effects of LSA occur inconsistently and are not directly comparable to the effects of classic psychedelic drugs like LSD or psilocybin or mescaline. LSA is described primarily as body and cognitive high with little visual effects. Like other psychedelics, LSA is not considered to be addictive. However, Adverse reactions such as severe anxiety, paranoia, 
and psychosis are always possible, particularly among those who are predisposed to psychiatric disorders. It's therefore highly advised to use harm reduction practices if using this substance. This is one reason why microdosing may be more beneficial and safer option. That, and as the LSA containing seeds are vasoconstrictors, microdosing would be preferable to megadosing. It's also theorised that a strong hallucinogenic experience may contain too much information for the brain to process all at once, and microdosing allows the gentle change and benefits to occur and be more permanent. LSA's psychedelic effects are believed to come from its efficacy at the 5-HT2A receptor as a partial agonist. However, the role of these interactions and how they result in the psychedelic experience remains the subject of scientific investigation. It's been noted in various oral histories that the Huna religion, the healing and spiritual shamanism of ancient Hawaii, employed the seeds of the Hawaiian baby wood rose for their shamanic rituals, using the seeds entheogenic and magical properties to connect with the spirit world. As LSA is similar to LSD, it's important to look at some of the research on LSD. Albert Hoffman lived to be 102 years of age and had taken more LSD trips than nearly anyone known during his time. He dubbed LSD as medicine for the soul and was astonished and frustrated when the world's nations made it illegal despite its obvious potential benefits and undiscovered properties in the fledging realm of applied therapy and psychiatry. Microdosed LSD could spell a breakthrough for Alzheimer's disease. A phase one trial has demonstrated safety in older volunteers and LSA has documented results in treating depression and anxiety. So it's realistic to hope it can affect the same signaling pathways that result in both an overproduction of toxic protein in the brains of Alzheimer's disease sufferers, as well as loss of communication between neurons and neuroinflammation. Research into the psychedelic has demonstrated that it's able to activate serotonin and dopamine neurotransmitter receptors that are involved in processes to control memory and cognition and are implicated in Alzheimer's disease and specifically the serotonin 5-HT2A receptor. These receptors decline in the brain of people suffering from Alzheimer's and as they decline so does cognitive function worsen. And the fact that LSD seems to work on all of the relevant receptors rather than just one makes its therapy potential so promising. A double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomised trial used microdoses of LSD, given in six doses over a three-week period. The group of 48 volunteers reported no ill effects from the sub-perceptual doses. Researcher Robin Carhart Harris, head of the Centre for Psychedelic Research at Imperial College London, said, the study provides reassuring safety data and opens the door for larger scale clinical trials to evaluate the potential therapeutic effects of LSD. Brain scans revealed that users experienced images through information drawn from many parts of their brains and not just the visual cortex at the back of the head that normally processes visual information. Under the drug, regions once segregated spoke to one another. LSD scans suggest volunteers were seeing with their eyes shut, though the images they reported were from their imagination rather than the outside world. Many more areas of the brain than normal were contributing to visual processing under LSD, even though volunteers' eyes were closed. Under the influence brain networks that deal with vision, attention, movement, 
and hearing became far more connecting, leading to what looked like a more unified brain. The drug can be seen as reversing the more restricted thinking we develop from infancy to adulthood, said Professor David Nutt. The study of LSD could pave the way for LSD or related chemicals to be used to treat psychiatric disorders. The drug could pull the brain out of thought patterns seen in depression and addiction through its effect on brain networks. Psychedelics promote structural and functional neural plasticity. Because atrophy of cortical neurons is believed to be a contributing factor to the development of mood and anxiety disorders, it's interesting to note how several psychedelics increase dendritic arbor complexity comparable to ketamine. Despite preclinical evidence for psychedelic induced neuroplasticity, confirmation in humans is grossly lacking. Given the increased interest in using low doses of psychedelics for psychiatric indications and the importance of neuroplasticity in the therapeutic response, a placebo controlled study investigated the effects of a single low dose of LSD at 5, 10, and 20 micrograms on circulating brain derived nootropic factor in healthy volunteers. Blood samples were collected every two hours over a six hour period and brain derived nootropic factor levels were determined afterwards in blood plasma using enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. The findings demonstrated an increase in brain derived nootropic factor blood plasma levels at four hours of five micrograms and at six hours at five and 20 micrograms compared to that of placebo. The findings that LSD acutely increased brain derived nootropic factor levels warrant studies in patient populations. For many years, it was believed that the brain did not make major changes after a certain point in time. Today, we know that the brain is actually capable of changing and developing throughout a lifetime. It's plastic or malleable. And the term neuroplasticity is used to describe this tendency for the brain to keep developing, changing, and potentially healing itself. Preclinical research has demonstrated that psychedelic substances, including LSD, psilocybin, and DMT, as well as alkaloids present in ayahuasca, affect neuroplasticity after acute and chronic administration. A recent in vitro study in cultured cortical neurons of animals showed increased formation of new neurites as expressed by the number of dendritic branches. The total length of arbors and formation of synapses after the extended 24 hour treatment with a range of psychedelics like LSD and DMT. While these effects were similar across psychedelic classes and the disassociative ketamine, LSD was the most potent. In light of the increased scientific interest in using low psychedelic doses, microdosing, preclinical work with DMT has also shown that neuroplastic changes even take place after administration of low DMT doses that are considered to be sub hallucinogenic. In humans, neuroplasticity can be reflected by the presence of brain derived nootropic factor in blood plasma. BDNF is a protein that is in part responsible for regulating the process of cell birth, cell growth and cell death in the brain. BDNF acts on certain neurons of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, helping to support survival rates of existing neurons and encouraging growth and differentiation of new neurons and synapses. Various studies have shown possible links between BDNF and conditions such as depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, Huntington's disease, Rett syndrome, and dementia, 
as well as anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. High levels of the protein are associated with improved cognitive function, mental health and short and long term memory. BDNF is a key player in several neurodegenerative and neuropsychiatric disorders and preclinical data showing psychedelics induce neuroplasticity even at low doses of psychedelics exist. Also, studies on intermittent fasting result in increased production of brain-derived nootropic factor, which increases the resistance of neurons in the brain to dysfunction and degradation in animal models of neurogenerative disorders. Neural plasticity is the neuronal basis for change in how the mind works, including learning, the formation of memory and changes in intelligence. Beginning in the 60s, important evidence started to emerge from laboratories that the brain changes itself through life in response to the person's experiences. A phenomenon now dubbed neuroplasticity, the findings rapidly accumulated and led in the 90s to a revolution in brain sciences. The view that the brain is plastic is now the mainstream view and further evidence of the phenomenon is accumulating rapidly and almost on a daily basis. The corpus callosum is a large C-shaped nerve fibre bundle found beneath the cerebral cortex. It stretches across the midline of the brain, connecting the left and the right cerebral hemispheres. It makes up for the largest connection of white matter tissue found in the brain. As psychedelics can temporarily alter the function of the corpus callosum, it can allow communication to increase between the two hemispheres of the brain. Brain imaging has correlated the reduction in time delay between the left and the right hemisphere communicating to each other and an increase in IQ. So as psychedelics have been shown to increase neuroplasticity, brain hemisphere synchronization, the release of brain derived nootropic factor, and have also shown great potential in the treatment of many forms of physical and mental illness, it's no wonder that so many people are now beginning to experiment with microdosing, with a variety of different hallucinogenic plants and chemicals in order to try and improve mental health, well-being, cognition and IQ. Although in the early stages of study, it looks like there will be some promising results in the future. And it does appear to be the safer option instead of the mega doses of psychedelics that was more common in the past. Again, it should be pointed out that this is still speculation and theory, and this is not an endorsement for taking psychedelic drugs, as there may be unknown risks. It is, however, a great area of research for many conditions such as post traumatic stress disorder, depression, improving things like creativity, intuitive ability, artistic ability, emotional intelligence, etc. Some of these microdosing benefits may be potentiated when stacked with various nootropics, as I plan to discuss further in future videos.